Welcome to the BXG podcast, the podcast where pop culture and nerd culture meet at the nexus of the universe and are melded as seamlessly as pizza, music, and anger. I am one of your <laughs> hosts, Brett and Bestwick, alongside my co-host, the pizza bandito himself, Fessy, oh, Greg, Greg Filson. <laughs> oh, damn it. Wow. Uh, you know, I've never, I've never got that upset about pizza then we'll get to that. But uh, I can understand how people in a house that big with an oven that small would get upset uh, over that kind of thing. Uh, you know, but other than that, other than thinking about getting upset about pizza, I'm fine. You know, we've got a, we got a show with a lot of good stuff coming. So I'm, I'm excited. Indeed. I have a feeling that there's like outlandish things will be said probably later down the line. But we'll see. Yeah, I think I think one of us will probably get upset about a topic way more than the other person thought they would. That's so, right. I'm excited. Uh, BXG Podcast publishes every Friday at 9 a.m. on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, and other podcast services around the globe. Official BXG social media accounts, facebook.com slash BXG Podcast, Instagram at BXG Podcast, at Twitter at bxg podcasts uh at instagram at gt fills at y2b twitter at gt fills and at y2b uh the youtube channel where you can see the review of shang chi shang chi and the legend of the ten rings um over there we did we had a long discussion on it i think we we were around 35 minutes or so how's um i i, I this is the 52nd episode main line it is episode which is a year worth of content Amazing. and i we never mention i always when i put the episodes on podcast services you know it's always like episode you know what 51 52 whatever but we never mentioned it on here maybe that's something we should start doing but i mean we've been at it now for for a full year maybe that's, that's crazy i mean how many podcasts last you know a month let alone a year so, um i, I saw many. a statistic somewhere that said it was like like only a third of podcasts make it past like the 10th episode wow so kudos to us kudos to us and anybody yeah. who wants to give us money to you know pump out products do ads let us know right. we're willing to do it anything yeah, like like ambassador sunglasses. Like ambassador sunglasses, ambassadorsun.com for nice glasses like Breton is wearing right now. Use promo code GTFills at checkout for 50% off plus your free shipping. There you go. Plug. <laughs> but we're gonna do our extra episode this month is gonna be kind of devoted to the celebration or the anniversary or whatever. And we are gonna try to get some. Listener inquiries as far as just some feedback, things you like, things yeah. you don't like, things you'd like to see more of, things that you'd like to see less of. I'm sorry the challenge isn't going anywhere, so don't bother writing in about it <laughs> unless you're writing in because you somehow want more of it. Yes. Um, sorry but, that I'm on this show and I like pop music. I just want to point that out too. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of heat in the street. <laughs> about that. I respect it. I respect yeah. the hate. Right. Yeah, you know, it is what it is, right? You don't know I'm, that you're hated unless you're loved, Brenton. Hey, I don't know what that means, but that's fair. Either I don't know either. It okay. just sounded good. So we got that coming up. We've got uh, we tonight. We have the challenge. We have what if. We have a retro review of Venom, uh, Venom Two here in theaters in about two weeks. We have the Rolling Stone top 500 songs of all time, allegedly. We have uh, some VMA discussion. We have some, we have the Hawkeye, Hawkeye trailer, live reacts. Yeah. Some other stuff, you know, pop culture potpourri. We've kind of, that's the thing that over the year, you know, we've adopted like certain <clears throat> things. Like we had like the movie news wrap up and then that kind of went away. And then it kind of, I should, should say it kind of evolved into yeah. the pop Vault. culture potpourri we had the quick hitters i would say like the movie news wrap up the, the games wrap up and the quick hitters kind of all evolved into the pop culture potpourri yeah which i they think found a good host They're yeah like symbiotes that found a right. good host right yeah something like that 
Um, but we'll go ahead and get started with number one, which this week is the challenge, Spies, Lies, and Allies, episode five, six? Six, yes. Uh, another old school episode filled with hookups, surprises, fights, and, and much, much more. The episode begins with Josh and Esther having a good time. Maybe Fester will turn into <laughs> Jester. Jester. <laughs> the Daily Challenge has agents riding on top of cars that are spinning out and doing donuts, and they're tasked with memorizing a code that will give them a combination for a lock. The fastest team to unlock their safe wins. The winners are Casey and Emmanuel, who certainly looks like he spent time in a Tijuana in prison. The cast gets cut loose, and CT brings out Emmy, who apparently is the Lady Gaga of Romania. She performs a song about aliens. I am not making any of this up. Nope. After, the, after the cast, after the cast returns to the house drunk, they do what any sensible drunk person would do: make copious amounts of pizza. Corey decides to stir shit up in the house and tells Amber that Fessy ate her pizza which causes drama. They decide to bring Josh into the mix, who initially seems like he's going to be in the adult in the room and de-escalate things, but then somewhere along the line, a flip gets, a switch gets flipped, and he and Fessy are screaming at each other. The episode ends on a cliffhanger in which Fessy open hand shoves Josh in the face. So the number one question coming out of this is, is he going to be kicked off the show? It looks like it, because TJ came in with the preview for next week is like nothing good happens when I have to come to the house. Okay. Um, see, I didn't get to see the next. Time. Oh yeah. The preview came up and yeah. it came right after. So yeah. TJ walks into the house and he's like, you guys know nothing good happens when I come into the house. You know, he won't stay, you know, he doesn't like losers. He doesn't like bullshit. He doesn't you know? like quitters. He doesn't like quitters or bullshit. And yeah. Um, yeah, it looks like he probably will, unless it's just, you know, TJ giving a warning or something. I don't think I don't he's be, given a warning if he's coming to the house. Yeah, he's not a warning type of guy, uh, which is why, you know, I'm a, I'm a big TJ guy. No warnings. Well, I think the warning, the warning was when Huey and Coriel got into it after the mm. elimination challenge. Yeah. And, and yeah. Corey pushed Huey and he, and he had to offer up a stern lecture to those young men. Do you think Josh will go too, or just Fessy? I think it's just going to be Fessy. Yeah, there were rumors like circulating from the from the get go that Fessy made an early exit this this season. Yeah. I was hoping that it was because he lost to someone like an embarrassing fashion, but this is kind of losing in an embarrassing fashion. You know what it is, but like here's the problem: <clears throat> do we just skip to the finale and give CT the money? Yes. Now? I mean, at this and point, just restart the season, <laughs> get the, get the new season going. It's definitely weird. I, the one thing that we haven't pointed out is when they go to the bar, mm -hmm. it's just their bar. Yeah. And nobody else is there. Correct. So it's hilarious that it's just like, well, you could just do this at the house. Right. But let's go to this bar. Yeah. They have the challenge, the challenge bar. And it's just like, it's like up cracks on the wall me up. And lights. Yeah. It's, it's so weird and so like it sounds it, it, this sounds funny to me but like it, it makes me think of like if you go to a school in a very small like town mm -hmm. and you and everybody just kind of but there's like way too many bars there's way more bars than there needs to be for the size of the like college and then mm -hmm. so your group of friends that would just go to your house all just go to this bar and they're like, let me pay for drinks instead of just having cheap drinks for free at my house. And I don't know if they have to pay for their drinks or not, but it's just funny. Like, let us move away from this house and do exactly what we would do at the house. The interesting thing about that, too, <laughs> is they started this before COVID. The last right. season that, that took place before the pandemic hit had this weird, like, they just rented it out wherever yeah. they were. You know what I mean? And this isn't like last season where it was on the site, like on the right. campus, quote unquote, the campus of, of the challenge house where they had like that igloo situation. But this is, I think this is off grounds, but it is the same thing where it's clearly, they're just like renting out this, whatever it is for them to come and cause problems basically. It's, and I hope it doesn't last at, you know, when we're, you know, hopefully past COVID sooner rather than later. I hope they go back to bars with other people because I do miss 
since we the don't really random have the hookups. Real world. Well, the random hookups with strangers, yes. but the fights with strangers is yes. one of my favorite things because yeah. they're like, well, the real world cast is here or whatever. I, I, I like, oh, I like, li- I used to live for that stuff when I would watch the real world and you'd be like, well, they're going to this bar. I'd be like, oh, I know that bar or I've heard I'm- of that bar. And it's just like, oh my God, let's get into a fight. Well, I think unfortunately it's probably for the protection of the the crew, the cast, everybody that they don't go to those places anymore and why we won't see that anymore because of Such reasons a like that. I uh, I don't miss the fight so much as I'm I miss like who's in Anissa's bed? Oh, that's you know, Ricky that she, right. she met at the bar last night. You know what I mean? <laughs> those like, are I'm, funny too. Yeah. The I'm walk of shame. Yeah. The walk of shames are great. Yeah. I just miss it all. I miss that all. I mean, there's a lot of things we miss because of, but they, like you said, they did this prior to COVID. So yeah. I think it's um, unless they just it's do safe, something we didn't. Unless it's a they do something we thing. didn't. No, it's a, it's, a safe, it's a safety thing. They're spinning people on top of cars, but that God forbid so, they go to a bar. The, the daily challenges are so lame. They are so lame. Can we do like, okay, I, I get it. It's supposed to be like spies and action movies and stuff like that. Can we get a challenge where, where they have to be tortured? And whoever holds out the longest wins. I think it should be like we're gonna rip your fingernails off, and whoever honestly just water torture, water torture. That would be great. Waterboard them. Well, not waterboard, just the dripping water thing. Where you just because that can drive like that drives me nuts if I'm sitting uh, death by a thousand paper cuts. Yeah, exactly. Like get real gnarly with it. Let's like get like let's um, see what happens. Let's get like Amanda and like saw her head off or something. Too much. I mean, I mean I'm not against let's, that. Let's. Yeah, that is true. No. They should make it more like James Bond. Exactly. Strip them, strip Here's them what down I don't with a whip. Here's what Let's I don't understand happens. about. Let's talk about Amanda. Let's talk about Amanda for a second. Let's talk about Amanda. Not Ashley. Amanda. No. I believe they're often confused. They are. I like Amanda. Let me tell you why. She's a terrible competitor. She's got no place. No. In, she- from a competition standpoint. I think that she's like, I think that she's attractive, but I think that it's because she has this persona of like, I'm an evil bitch is what right, kind right. of makes her. Do you know what's really a bummer though? Well, man, it's not a bummer, I guess, but like she's like in a fully fledged relationship now with Fessy. That's just weird. They vacationed really... in Mexico together. I just don't like that for either of those parties because i don't know she's Fessy's growing on me like well a, i you know what i will maybe like a fungus me. well i was gonna but, say like mold yeah you know? well that's a fungus um, yeah exactly i'm just yeah, yeah. so is she just I, there's this thing where i always you know we talk about like card fa- famous people and people say this about the kardashians but where there's like nothing behind the eyes <laughs> and well, that was Amanda. That is, girl. Well, this Amanda, the, they've shown her way more recently too. Yeah. So I wasn't paying attention to her that much before, but now there is, she's also giving me the persona of like nothing back there. Hmm. And which is fine. No, it's fine. I almost I feel would like rather it's an illusion. Her, that she, I'd rather have her on a season than Ashley. Oh, I certainly would. She's not annoying like Ashley. Yeah. I just don't think she really knows what to really do. Ashley kind of knows what to do that's why she's one and you know she knows how to stick around that's there you go which is annoying that's, yeah, right. that's what i mean she knows she's how to a stick survivor. around right she I'm ain't gonna survivor. give up oh yeah. i hate that we both did that that really upset me well it's a popular song i mean that means nothing i just so yeah i I would take amanda over ashley any day of the week if you're confusing the two what do you think is a more popular song that or gasolina foreshadowing uh i would think that i'm a survivor is considering the gasolina had just a very small run but who knows maybe i'm wrong maybe maybe i'm wrong maybe gasolina is a very popular song and considered one of the best songs ever maybe we'll see (laughs) We uh, we'll see uh, i guess so, I would, yeah we had to talk about her just singing and yeah then, oh yeah we have to talk yeah about that's aliens. i think the key of this episode to me that yes. was the highlight uh right they they put her in like a nice little little red dress very weird didn't like it very weird it was very weird it made me feel uncomfortable 
Yeah. And I'm sitting by myself watching this in the morning, having my coffee. And I'm like, Ooh, this is a weird, why do I feel weird? Why do I feel weird? I'm not, I'm not in this house. She felt a little uncomfortable with it. That's not her vibe. Um, it's not, apparently it is, but apparently it is. You wouldn't know. And then no, because like, oh. like she, like she presents, she acts like a teenager. She's got like funny socks and mm-hmm. Mr. TJ and the way she, she's very emotional. And, yeah. but then like I, you know, like I had the write up, she's apparently the Romanian lady Gaga. Yeah. It's crazy. That um, might not be the case. Saying. I just put that in there to upset you. It didn't actually upset me because, you know, maybe she is. I don't know. I don't know what's popular in Romania. I don't know Survival. what's going on there. Yeah. I mean, like we joked around Survivor in Romania. It's just day to day living. <laughs> that's, a, that's the show. And just randomly record people there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so everyone that lives there is a contestant on Survivor Romania. But uh, yeah, if that you was make weird. it to the birthday, your next birthday, you're a winner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you get to live another year. That's the prize. Um, there's no money. <laughs> uh, shout out to our Romanian listeners. Yeah. Um, the song was weird. And, and then <laughs> everyone's like, yeah, I kind of have it stuck in my head. It's like, yeah, because it's literally the only thing you get to listen to. So, <laughs> it's just, of course, you're going to get the only thing you get to listen to. Do you know what my head. favorite part about that was? Uh, yes what is <laughs> you know how when they play because it's mtv and they have to pretend that they like you that they care about music. oh yeah that they care so That's whenever right. in one of their shows they play music they show at the bottom of the screen like now playing artists. oh yeah title. i lost my and mind it was her it was emmy yep. whatever her last name is alien i was like yeah she made it. she's made it she made it yep she she's... just quit this business and head for pop stardom certainly quit the challenge business well although i i don't know she's, i'm not gonna i don't want to judge her too early i think that no. she's you know she's certainly she certainly I think earned with, her a, key. with a good partner she could do well yes yeah she has just unfortunately had to have bad partners yeah and that's not good no she's trying her partners seem to not care well, her partners have been, at least for the last two weeks, with Gabo, whose head is uh, filled with mostly song lyrics, according to him, and then Huey, who possibly fell asleep on top of the car. Uh, yeah, she I do kept think saying, that Huey, what's the number? And he's just like not saying anything. Huey's so weird. We had to think I, about it. I had to think about it. Think. You know, I w- I've been back and forth with Huey, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to say I'm out. Yeah, I'm uh, fourth. I'm not I'm, back. I'm, I'm fourth. I'm I said out. it last I'm week. Out. I've had 100%. my fill. Yeah. You've had your fill. And I was yeah. just late to the party. I was late to the party. Not fashionably late. I was just late. It was embarrassing for me to show up that late. I'm sorry. Well, um, it's, I it's do. Like I, I said, brought wine. I'm sorry. But did you yeah. bring babka? Uh, I brought cinnamon babka. That's uh, the lesser yeah. babka. There is no lesser babka. There is. Yeah. As I said, but last he week, sucks. I actually don't like him, and I don't want him to be back on the show. He's too much for me. As I said last week, we already have a George. Yeah, I only have enough room in my heart for one person <laughs> who has emotional meltdowns on the challenge, and it's filled by Josh Martinez, which is what we got. It was the Tori the, the, setting that's the it thing up. Is it doesn't. It, this is the thing that pisses me off about this situation, right? Was they got Josh. He comes in. He's trying to calm everything down. He is, yeah. And then, obviously, these things are edited for entertainment value, right? But then, right. like, him and Fester are in each other's faces. He's trying to calm everything down. And then, literally within a blink of the eye, it didn't make any sense to me. Because you need that spark, because it's not like we get it. Josh is an emotional guy, but also like you said last week, he oftentimes the things that he's overreacting to are legitimate things. Yeah. And I think that the editing did him no justice in this situation because he came into the room and was like, what are you guys doing? Amber, you need to calm down. And then right. seconds, like seemingly seconds later, him and Fessier at each other's throats. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll find out when 
if and when he gets kicked out, if, you know, TJ has a response to like, was this brought on? Like, you know, was he provoked? Was he not provoked? Right. That kind of thing. I mean, TJ is the ultimate judge in the room. Uh, I think it I would respect be funny his decisions. If he, if he, uh, if he kicked, I think it would be funny if he kicked Corey and Tori off for just like starting the whole thing, instigating it. Like <clears throat> that would be pouring a little gasolina on it. That would be what would, that would be the appropriate move. If he's just like, Hey, you guys started this thing. So you're out, you know, yeah. guys don't hit each other. Don't hit each other. You guys know better. We're right. gonna let that slide. You two don't be instigators. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Um, but you know, more to come. They left us on a cliffhanger. We'll see what happens. We're excited. We love the challenge. If you love the challenge, let us know, get into the challenge. You can easily rewatch it. Um, just get into it and let us know, get it, give Do us it. your thoughts. Do, Do it. it. It's great. You're not going to, I'll tell you right now, if you watch two episodes, you're not going to, you're not going to stop. You got to watch two. Got to watch two. All right. So we'll move on to the Marvel universe with what if, and this week is Killmonger saved Tony Stark in Afghanistan. Tony's caravan gets blown up, but before we, he gets captured, he's saved by Eric Killmonger and the world's deprived of Iron Man. Killmonger reveals the plot to have, killed to, to have Tony killed by Obadiah, and Tony takes a shine to the kid. They start to make Killmonger's drone, which like an awful lot like Ivan Vanko from Iron Man 2. That was not lost on me. They need Vibranium to pull the drones off, and Killmonger arranges a meeting between Rhodey and Claw. The meeting is ambushed by T'Challa, but Killmonger kills uh, Rhodey and T'Challa. Tony confronts him for the murders, but he is killed as well. Killmonger presents Claw to the Wakandas and manipulates the U.S. Army into attacking Wakanda. He then leads the Wakandan army into a battle against the drones he constructed. He wins their favor and becomes the next Black Panther. Shuri, meanwhile, recovers videos from Jarvis that contains evidence of all of Killmonger's misdeeds. So here we are with this episode. This episode had elements of four or five different marvel movies yeah had iron man one iron man two age of ultron and uh black panther yeah at least maybe more not including like the flashbacks to end game or whatever but um yeah i mean it was an interesting episode i think it kind of showed the capabilities in terms of you know, political espionage uh, from Eric Killmonger. Uh, I was of the mind when I saw the previews that I was hoping that this would have given him the chance to be a good guy instead of an almost right. worse bad guy. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> I think that was like what I thought too. I was like, oh, so he's going to be a good guy in this now. And nope, it's, it kind of bummed me out. Like, I think yeah. this is the thing I've learned from these is these are just to bum us out. I think so. It's like, what if you're sad? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm trying to think. Like, the only one that was really like happy was the second one, uh, where T'Challa yeah. became, became Star Lord. Yeah. That was it. Every, but all the other ones have just been more like, just kind of like you said, kind of a bummer. And uh, I'll say that the animation for Tony Stark in this episode was terrible. Didn't look anything. Mm-hmm. It was weird. It, was not, yeah, I don't know what... it didn't look good. His voice actor, Robert Downey Jr.'s voice actor replacement, some of the time sounded like him and some of the time yes. sounded like somebody else like doing a bad RDJ impression. Yeah, that was weird. Um, so that like those scenes didn't really work for me. The Tony scenes didn't really work for me. The, um, the uh, scenes with Killmonger and fighting T'Challa in the uh, the ship thing uh, from basically it was from Age of Ultron. That was interesting, Rhodey. That that whole situation, um, you know, the whole nine. It was yeah. I mean, it was just like like these episodes are just like they're just kind of a bummer, man. It's really weird. Like <clears throat> I thought the episode was fine. It was not my favorite by any means. Um, because I think I had one impression and then it went the totally different direction of like, well, Killmonger was just, no matter what. He's a bad guy. He's a bad guy. There was just yeah. no change in him. And that's the way it is. And 
you know, he gets the kill. He has the shirt off and the kills thing he says to Tony. And, right. you know, there's just, there was no winning with Killmonger. And when you have that nickname, that is just going to stick. And yeah. So it's like Fessy being messy. Yeah. So, you know, true, true. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah. I, as far as this goes, I mean, I'm still on board for the animation looks good in every episode. And I'm on board for the most part like with the stories, I just wish that there was something about them that was just a little bit more upbeat. It's yeah. just like, that's just the thing, man. It's like the, the third episode where Hank Pym killed all the Avengers. That was kind of neat. And then you did get yeah. the, the thing at the end with like Captain Marvel and Captain America. And that was kind of cool. But then the fourth episode with Dr. Strange was just like, Oh my God, this is, horrible. <laughs> the like, this, is this isn't even fun to watch. It's so no. depressing. <clears throat> right. And uh, then the next one last week with the zombies was, eh. I feel like they really, I think like in terms of like marketing, they were really leaning heavily on the zombies one being really well liked. Yeah. And I didn't think it was, it was so horror tropey. Yeah. And it didn't really do it for me. And then this one was, I think this one was a little, like a little bit, at least more interesting as far as like an actual complex storyline. Well, I think the thing is with this one too, is, you know, we, we say this all the time, how much we like the ground and this Mm -hmm. was purely the ground. There was nothing more than that existing in this. Right. And, you know, it's just like, oh, so we don't have Iron Man. And this is what happens if we don't have Iron Man, you know, and you know, yeah. and there was nothing more beyond that. Like, we don't get any, you know, look aheads of, you know, Thanos. We get none of that. We have the yeah. look back of Tony, you know, snapping his fingers, but we don't get right. the we don't get the look ahead of this. What if? And so we don't know. We don't presumably know. But we kind of have an idea. Well, if there's no Tony, then we're probably screwed. Right. So, you know, another bad kind of thing. Yeah, it's just, I, I have a feeling that maybe I mean, we have four more left, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So you got to feel like maybe the 10th one will be uplifting. Probably not. Probably not. Just gonna uh, all be really I'm depressing. trying to think of what else I know there is for sure. I know that there's an episode where Vision collects collects all of the uh infinity infinity yeah. stones i know that um there's an episode where spider-man becomes sorcerer supreme but i wonder if that's the zombie episode because he did wear the wear the cape. right he wore the cape um but yeah i don't know I, I hope there's at least one up uplifting episode or something a little more fun because it does either bumming me out no. Yeah. I mean, I like I said, the, 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 um, the, uh, the, the animation's really cool. And, yeah. you know, the storylines are, they're interesting and they're all, you know, the comic, whatever, right. uh, line of the what if stuff. But it's just, I, I, <sighs> yeah. I think this is, was a really cool idea in, like, in premise. It's just, oh, man, what if, you know what if captain america was actually captain carter what if you know but i think that it's it's almost gone like too far off the rails with some of the episode like the zombie episode was like the more i think about it like in the moment when we talked about it i was like oh this wasn't that bad it was it was basically it was a horror movie in a half an hour with all these tropes and blah 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 but like looking back on i'm like man that was a half hour of my life that's never coming back (laughs) It was a very popular what if comic. I know yeah. that. Like people, yeah. so that's probably part of it too. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Right. So yeah, no, no, I, you know, I'm still, you know, I'm still watching them. Um, mm-hmm. like I, you know, I'm not not just because of this, I would watch these no matter what. Yeah, but sure. they haven't, right. I will say they have not lived up to my expectations hundred percent. Say that. Yeah, I think that that's yeah. a fair statement. I think also, and this ain't just I think having seen the Hawkeye trailer. And I saw that mm. after watching it, but still it's like the Hawkeye trailer looks so good and so much fun. We haven't seen the Hawkeye trailer yet, Greg. Oh, I'm sorry. Time travel. When we do time travel. Time travel. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, so when I see the Hawkeye trailer, no, 
Uh, so anyhow, but I just, it's, it's not as good as I thought it was going to be. There's still four episodes left uh, and a lot yeah. can happen. So, right. Uh, right. and maybe I had too high of expectations. That is definitely possible yeah. too. That's Could possible. be on me. Yeah. But, you know, I, we'll see what happens. So peeling back the curtain a little bit, mm-hmm. listeners, sometimes we record the episode out of order. <laughs> a lot of shows do that, so it's okay. Yeah, yeah. But we'll move on. We will. All right, number three tonight. We had a guest lined up. The guest wasn't able to make it. Scheduling conflicts, these things happen, and that's fine. So we decided with Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage coming here in a couple of weeks that we would do a Bretton and Greg at the movies at home retro review of 2018's Venom. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to do this in the same style that we did uh, all of the MCU uh, reviews for the extra episodes. So we're going to go through the budget, the gross starring, Stanley cameo, all that stuff. If you haven't listened to those, I don't know what you're doing. Go listen to them. <laughs> They're great. They I, I listened to them myself. Me too. You know, that's, how, that's how good they were. Uh, and I usually don't listen after we're done and get things out. I don't listen to it. But I actually did go back and listen to the MCU stuff. So Venom, 2018, a budget of $116 million, which is pretty low, especially... Yeah. Going back and looking at some of those MCU movies, uh, they were almost uniformly in the 200 millions. And the gross was an impressive uh, 856 million, uh, relatively small cast. Uh, you had Tom Hardy as Eddie, Eddie Brock and Venom. He also did the voice of Venom. Uh, Michelle Williams as Anne Wei Ying uh, and Riz Ahmed as uh, Carlton Drake slash Riot. Weird seeing him without facial hair to me it was yeah i knew it was him and i like had to keep telling myself that's him because he looked almost plastic like cg yeah like he's got very good skin i guess i don't know beautiful skin don't like a don't like a great actor just a great actor though yeah yeah he looked manufactured the villain was carlton drake slash riot another symbiote the stanley cameo was at the end he tells eddie not to give up on (laughs) ian Either one of them, either one of you guys, implying that he is aware of Venom's <laughs> presence, which is kind of funny. Uh, so before we get into the movie, there's a lot about kind of the the making of the movie that's pretty interesting. Or yeah. do you want to say, let's say that for after. Okay. What, uh, what did you think of, because this was both of our first time seeing yeah. this. Uh, um, what did you I, think I, of Venom? I remember when it came out and I was going to go see it and it was in Juno and a lot of times movies would only play for a weekend or a week, I should say. And it was just a bad, it was a bad week and I just couldn't see it. And I was bummed out because, you know, I, I thought it looked at least at the worst fun. And so like, it's been a long time and I'm glad I, I I watched it today and it was a way better than it needed to be way better than it needed to be. Um, it was just like you said, it was a small cast. I'd like that about it. It was basically just, you know, nuts and bolts of making these kind of movies. Uh, the storyline was just enough to kind of keep you going, to give you that. I think the whole idea of this was to build to its car, obviously. But when you're watching it, you're like, this is building to something bigger, which is the carnage uh, revelation. And I, I liked every single person in this movie too, for what their role was, you know, Tom Hardy was great. Uh, it was, you know, Riz Ahmed was, I thought really good as a villain. He was actually a villain that was villainous and didn't yeah. ca- like it, it, the actual stake of the world was, you know, in his hands, he wanted to take on his symbiote and it was a good villain, which it was, it wasn't the opposite of Eddie, or, you know, it wasn't the opposite of him. It wasn't like the normal Marvel trope. It was just this guy that was basically like, I don't give a crap. And so I thought when I looked at the Rotten Tomatoes score and I saw how low it was, I was like, well, shockingly shockingly low. low. But then I saw the user score. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of people that I follow on um, Instagram or Twitter love this movie, like love it. They rank it higher than a lot of the MCU movies. And I'm like, okay. And I, you know, I still was going in kind of skeptical but I just thought it was 
it was a fast movie too. I thought yeah. this movie was good. I mean, like, I definitely recommend it. Before, we, like, I, I thought it was really good. It's really fast. Uh, it's funny enough. Like, I love the banter between Venom and uh, Eddie. I think that's really good. I thought that like the connection to uh, him and Anne is just good enough to, you know, there's, there's just, and Michelle Williams is an amazing actress. So to have the people they have in this movie, all people that, you know, really have been nominated for awards or won awards doing this kind of movie when it's not an MCU movie, I think was really terrific. So, uh, you know, it's not, I I don't know where, if we were to rank everything and I'm not going to do that again, I don't know where I would rank it in the MCU movies because this just is different. And, I, but I do think it's, it's very good. It, like I said, I think it's better than it needed to be to still be enjoyable. And I really enjoyed it. Um, fast, it moved fast. Like you said, I, I was mm-hmm. shocked at the runtime. It's only about an hour and 45 minutes. Um, less than that with credits. The first act of the movie I found to be a little boring. I was questioning, I had this whole argument ready, right? I had this whole argument ready through the first and maybe even a little bit part of the second act where it's just kind of establishing that Eddie Brock is a loser, but the reality of it is is he's kind of not a loser. Like there's this whole thing the whole way through that Eddie's this loser, but Mm -hmm. he's actually was a very successful investigative journalist prior to being fired for being a good investigative journalist. Like he got fired for being good at his job. You know what I mean? And he did some shady shit, but I would imagine that a lot of investigative journalists will do that from time to time to get a scoop or to get a story. I don't know. I'm not an investigative journalist yet. I will tell you that you do what you can within the legal boundaries Right. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do. So what he did, none of that was technically illegal. I wasn't hundred so. percent sure on like what exactly it was that got Michelle Williams character fired for what he did. Was it because he went on her laptop and looked at stuff and then used that it, as a source? Yeah. But then he never said that that was his source though. So how could they link that? They so I probably kind of felt like that was, that's a little bit of a plot hole. <laughs> yeah. Right. So through the first through the first act part of the second act i had this argument in my head i I was formulating this argument that tom hardy is a very scotty pippen actor like he's a great number two inception great number two dark Knight rises great number two um what's uh, mad max he's the lead but he's not really the lead right great number two Can he really carry a film? It wasn't until Venom, you know, took over him. They started to share this symbiotic relationship that I really felt his performance started to shine. And that kind of left that argument for me in the dust Mm -hmm. for the second half of the movie. Because I felt like he's basically acting like a schizo you know what i mean like somebody with Mm -hmm. multiple personality syndrome or whatever and i thought that that is really what carried the movie through the second half i felt like i know that they marketed this as almost as like a like an action horror movie i didn't feel that way at all it just felt like a marvel movie to me yeah, You know what I mean? It didn't feel like it was anything other than a Marvel movie in some respects. Obviously, it's not technically a Marvel movie from Marvel Studios, but it's a Marvel movie, right? It's an association with Marvel, as, a, as they said in the <laughs> preview or whatever for it. Right. And there's <laughs> like a whole, there's a whole thing and, and we'll get into a lot of that. But I would argue against, you know, what you're saying as far as Uh, the Carlton Drake character or the villain because really like yes he's the villain he's the human antagonist and he's not like Eddie Eddie is a a good is is a good guy right he's a good guy Mm. and Carlton Drake is like kind of a scumbag I mean he's sacrificing poor people he's doing whatever the needs but but that's sort of the thing though is that he's a 
uh, the ends justify the means character. And as far as like the final battle, it did still kind of fall into that trope of good version versus bad version with Venom versus Riot. And I don't know what yeah. else you do here for that, especially as you're introducing this character, but it did fall into that trope. Where would I rank this if if it were part of the MCU? Where would I put it? Somewhere in the middle, bottom yeah. middle. You know what I mean? It is like, I mean, if you look at the numbers, by the numbers, by the cast, by the actual budget, it is basically a budget Marvel movie. You know what I mean? So, but at the same time, when you look at that, I, I don't, I, I find it fascinating when you look on Rotten Tomatoes or you look on Metacritic and there's such a gap between critical and user scores. And oh, yeah. you see this with Venom and the other two things that are like so readily weird to me that the gap is so large is The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. The Last Jedi is like a 90 on Metacritic critical or like a high 80 and it's like a somewhere in the 50s. Wow. Score. And it's just weird to me that that the you know the the critics get it so one so skewed one way and the fans get it so skewed the other. I think that this I think that what really carries this is that it's just such a popular character, you know, and it's never really gotten its due. It was like the character was not great in Spider-Man 3. No. And there was also some hype around this that this was maybe going to connect to the MCU, which is another thing we'll talk about in a second. And I think that the, the character being immensely popular is really what carried this film. It almost made a billion dollars. You know what I mean? The, the fans really, for the longest time, have wanted Venom to be a big character because he's one of the few villains, and he's not really a villain. He's more He develops more into an anti-hero. He is initially Spider-Man's you know and you know antagonist but he does become more of an anti-hero in the comic books he has his own comic and he's right you know this character that looks the way he does which is you know very rare for marvel or dc yeah there we go exactly nice that's pretty sweet uh, i didn't even plan that actually this that's is awesome up i grabbed uh so you know and I get it, like after seeing it, and then I understand why it has become, I, I hate to say it's a cult classic because it made $800 million, but yeah. it does feel like that, even though it made bit. so much money, yeah. because there is just this thing about people that like this movie are like in love with it. I, yeah. It's just really, really funny to me. And I, I wouldn't put myself there, but I do no. enjoy it. I don't yeah. feel bad that I, you know, rented it today. I don't, there's nothing about to, what I did, you know, watching it. There's nothing, like, I didn't feel like, A, I wasted time. B, I spent a little bit of money to watch it and, you know, C, we're talking about it. Like, I, I have no regrets on any of that. It's way better than, like you said, the it's in the middle, by bottom middle of the MCU movies. Yeah. And that seems fair. And I think no matter who did it, a Venom movie would always kind of be like that because it's a weird character. As popular as he is, it's still a weird character. So let's get into that a little bit. Uh, I think that's a good Greg way. Uh, Venom... <laughs> Venom as a lead character has had a somewhat tortured development. New Line, cinema, New Line originally, had the rights and was developing a film that would have seen Dolph Lundgren. Holy crap. As the titular character in 1997. That would have been a disaster. The rights would eventually move to, to Sony and Venom would appear in the third <laughs> film of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. Originally, Topher Grace's Eddie Brock was a small cameo, but Sony production wanted to see him evolve into a main character that would help the franchise uh, have legs in the same way the solo Wolverine's outings did for the X-Men franchise. Venom was being developed alongside Spider-Man 4. However, Tobey Maguire, Topher Grace, and Sam Raimi all opted out, and Venom would be reimagined from the ground up in the same way the Andrew Garfield-led Amazing Spider-Man movies would be. Eventually, Venom would be set to add on to the Amazing franchise, but as we covered in our MCU, in review, Phase 3, Part 1, see issue three 
The amazing <laughs> franchise was scrapped in favor in favor of an MCU crossover in which Tom Holland became Spider-Man. In 2016, the film would see a revival with Deadwood, Deadpool, Deadwood, <laughs> Deadwood. Deadpool, <laughs> Deadpool and Logan uh, succeeding in the R-rated mm, superhero space. The idea was to launch a shared universe of Sony-owned Spider-Man Marvel properties. The film does not connect to the MCU version of Spider-Man, according to Marvel boss Kevin Feige. But producers at Sony have said the film is adjunct to Tom, Tom Holland's Spider-Man, and he could pop up at some point in future Sony MU projects. The film was panned critically with a 38% on Rotten Tomatoes, as we said, but fans of the anti-hero came out in droves as the film scored $836 million at the box office and sits at an 80% fan rating on Rotten Tomatoes. The film is based heavily on two comic arcs, 1993's Venom Lethal Protector and 1995's Planet of the Symbiotes. Venom's first comic appearance was in the Amazing Spider-Man issue number 252, May 1984, which predates both of us, by the way. Yeah. As the symbiote, when his first host, Peter Parker, uh, was Peter Parker, the black Spider-Man suit, obviously, and his first full appearance as Venom was Amazing Spider-Man 300 in 1988, which shows how long these things get planned out. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Right. Uh, he was introduced as one of Spider-Man's primary arch enemies, a dark reflection of Peter Parker, and would evolve into an anti-hero over time. He was ranked number 22 on IGN's list of best comic book villains. So I think one of the questions that really needs asked here is there's been talk back and forth about the possibility of this Venom or this iteration of Venom eventually crossing over into the MCU. Do you think that that is possible? Yes, because of money. Uh, and, you know, I just think, I think at this point, you know, the fact that they were able to get Spider-Man into the MCU, and then you take the most popular character in the Spider-Man comic books other than Spider-Man, uh, I feel like it, I, I, you know, whether it does happen, I would say, I would say the odds are like 55, 45, it happens. It's not a lot, but I think if people if people go after it enough, they're going to try to do something to get this character in the MCU. Um, I don't necessarily think it's needed because we've always said that Spider-Man has the best villains and we can live without a Venom character in those movies. It, you know, would it be cool? Sure. It'd be cool. It's not needed. Spider-Man has so many, so many villains that these movies can go on and on. And we haven't, you know, we haven't needed it yet. And we know going forward, obviously not going to be in the next one. So I don't wouldn't that be a trip that would be incredible wouldn't that, if it be, happens, wouldn't that if, be insane if it happens it'll be the loudest reaction in the theater that isn't uh infinity war endgame i, I don't know i think it might beat that you, uh, i mean the loudest reaction i've had to the theater was when um uh, captain america got the hammer that's the loudest i've ever been in a theater that was insane uh I, I don't know if it, I don't know if Venom shows up, but man, you're right. I don't know, especially since people are what, like, it's been so long to be in that big time Marvel it's, movie. Maybe yes. people would just be so coiled up, ready to attack, ready to just go nuts. Well, and the other thing is that that would be, it'd be sick. I honestly, it'd be, I would lose my mind if it happened. So the two, the two loudest, uh, Cap picking up the hammer and Thor showing up in Wakanda are the two loudest pops, we borrow a wrestling yeah. term, uh, pops that have, have ever happened in a theater outside of Samuel L. Jackson delivering that iconic line in Snakes on a Plane. <laughs> I think that this would beat that. And the reason why, four is awesome. We know this, right? Yes. Especially that version of four. Yeah. That, scene in, that scene with Captain America, we've been building to that for you know, 12 movies or whatever, right? Right. This is Spider-Man. The most popular Marvel character by a country mile. Yeah. Probably the most popular comic book character not named Batman. Yeah. Maybe even more so than Batman. 
I mean, I would argue that, but I, I would argue Batman's more popular, but some may say Spider-Man. And so to have this, when it, it would almost be a complete misdirection. Everybody, we know about Doc Ock. We know about Shocker or uh, Electra rather. We know about, we're pretty sure Toby and Garfield show up. Right. Tom Hardy showed up as Venom. It would bring the house down. It would I'm rooting be, for it. It would, be, be it would be Hulk Hogan showing up as the 30th guy in the Royal Rumble. You know what I mean? It would just yeah. completely bring the house down. But it's not going to happen. So, right. I mean, we amazing, can talk about it. It would be amazing. But I like, I would happen. love for it to happen. I would, for so many reasons. Uh, yeah. Just to see what that reaction would be like. I would definitely, I, you know, it would, it would almost be a bummer because it's not going to be full theaters. You know what I mean? Right, right. Because because of everything, but my God, that would be it would totally bring the house down. I don't think. Getting back to the original question, I don't think that they can bring this version of Venom to the MCU. Really? He's yeah. already a hero. You know what I mean? And well, I mean, it want could be a thing see, where he's not the see, villain. I don't. I don't think you want that though. I don't want that, but I'm saying that I, I could think be what you, they do. I think if you if if you want Venom, he's got to be opposing Spider-Man, and that was a lot mm. of the critical, like the critical flack that this movie got was that the character wasn't was just not as interesting had it been with Spider-Man. I mean, I would certainly argue this movie was better than Spider-Man Three. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt that it was. I yeah, think there's no sure. doubt. Because Spider-Man 3 is not great. And this movie was good. I wouldn't say it was great. I would say it was it was average to good. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just I just don't know that they can bring this version over. But I also think that the telltale, we may know more about the prospects of Venom crossing over to the MCU with let there be carnage rather than far from home. I would True. imagine. Right. I think we right. probably get a better, a better sense of if that's a possibility after let there be carnage. Do you plan on seeing, I guess this is the last follow-up question, but do you plan on seeing let there be carnage in theaters? Yeah, this, this definitely made me want to go see it in theaters. Um, I, I also just have this thing where like, after you start seeing these movies in theaters, you know, after seeing shang Chi and, that experience is just good and it's fun. It, there's not that many people in theaters right now, which is a good thing and a bad thing considering what's going on. I, you know, there is obviously the joy of seeing a packed theater with a good movie. Uh, but I, you know, I'm not going to see it opening night. I just don't right. think I'll do that. It's not in that realm of things, but I'll definitely see it probably like a Tuesday matinee, catch it. And uh, you know, I, what do you, or you think you'll see it in theaters? I don't, uh... I doubt it. If I can sneak off on like a Monday or a Friday afternoon when, yeah. you know, people are in school and stuff like that, that I might, but it's not because it's not an MCU or a star Wars movie. It's not a priority for me and this podcast. You know what I mean? Like if it right. were, if it came straight to on demand, it'd be a, it'd be a lock. Like, even if it were just like, hey, it's on demand, but you got to pay 20 bucks. I'd pay 20 bucks to see it on demand. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to, like, it's not priority for me to get to the theater, basically. Okay. I so we'll see. I mean, if, if we're both able to, we'll review it. And if not, then we'll just wait and review it when it's streaming. Because a yeah. lot of people, that's the choice that they're going to make to see it anyway. So, right. Yeah. But uh, we'll move on from uh, Marvel. Uh, and two, uh, and this just came out, uh, you know, at, right before we recorded today, Rolling Stone released its later, latest iteration of the 500 greatest songs. There are 500 greatest songs. For the first time in 17 years, Rolling Stone magazine released an updated version of its 500 greatest songs of all time, uh, which is crazy. It went this long considering, you know, how many new people are around. But uh, this list now includes Adele, Amy Winehouse, Kanye West, Beyonce, Kendrick Lamar, Taylor Swift, among other contemporary artists. Uh, I'm not going to obviously go through too many of these. I, I narrowed it down, obviously, just the top 10 I thought was the best because it still kind of was able to get a lot of contemporary artists in there. Uh, so 10 was Outcast, Hey Ya, 
uh, nine Fleetwood Mac, Dreams, eight this is Missy the Elliott. Top ten. This is the or top. The, 10. Your top ten. Their top ten. Okay. Their top ten. Um, eight Missy Elliott, Get Your Freak On. Uh, seven The Beatles, Strawberry Fields Forever. Six Marvin Gaye, What's Going On. Five Nirvana, Smells Like Teen Spirit. Uh, four Bob Dylan, Like a Rolling Stone. Three Sam Cooke, A Change Is Going to Come. Two Public Enemy, Fight the Power. And one was Aretha Franklin, Respect. So I don't know if you look through the list. I look through kind of looking at it right now. I, I look through mostly just like the top 100. Yeah, that's what I'm going talking. beyond that is. Uh, yeah, it was sort of weird to me. Some of like some of the artists is like, like higher songs. There's sort of like some artists like most popular songs weren't necessarily their highest ranked song or whatever like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the top ten. It was one of those funny things where I was like, none of these songs are my favorite song by that artist which is just kind of funny to me, other than Respect by Aretha Franklin, I guess. But I thought that was a, a, a sort of an interesting take. I don't, you know, obviously this is just a panel of people that work at Rolling Stone that rank these things. Um, I know the White Stripes had a very high ranking. Uh, and But I think it's interesting. I think the thing that's interesting to me on, on something like this is why. <sighs> And I, and I wonder, like, why 500 is always kind of my thing with Rolling Stone. And, you know, well, I don't. There's so many songs. And there's so many songs. I get that. But it's at a point where it's like, you know, when we get that far into things, it just seems almost weird to me that, like, here's 500 best songs of all time when there's millions of songs out there. Uh, I don't have a problem with the top 10. This is something I was, like, really, why I brought this. I literally don't have a problem with the top 10 because. I just, there's no way to rank songs. I just think this is kind of it's one all of those subjective. Weird, yeah. It's subjective. Uh, like I said, none of the none of the top ten songs on this list by those artists is my favorite song by that artist. And so that's sort of funny to me the way that this works. But I mean, uh, do you have any <clears throat> thoughts on from what you saw beyond even I'm the just, top ten? Or- yeah, I'm looking. I, I just clicked on because they have them in tabs: 500 to mm-hmm. 429, 428 to 357. 356 to 285. I just Googled Rolling Stone top 500. Uh, 284 to 213, 212 to 141, 140 to 69, 68 to 1. Uh, something that struck out to me was that they had Daddy Yankees Gasolina as number 50, and that should not be on the top 500 songs. That like was, oh, I'm glad you brought that up. I actually got Robin, like super angry when Robin I Robin Dancing on My Own, number 20. Yeah, that was that's, that's a rough take it, too. When okay, John, imagine Purple Rain. I'm now in the top. See, this is okay. Beyonce featuring Jay Z, Crazy in Love. And I'm gonna read. Okay, I'm gonna read the blurb. Right, I'm gonna read the blurb. Producer Rich Harrison had trouble convincing friends and peers that the beat to Crazy in Love had much potential. So he added a five alarm horn blast taken from 70s soldiers, soldiers like the Chillites. Are you my woman? Tell me so. As well as his own instrumental flourishes and kept it at the ready for the right moment and the right artist until I got the call from B, he said later. As a single that inaugurated Beyonce's solo career, the song emphatically announced her arrival as the era's dominant pop power, Jay Z's killer verse was added at the last minute. Bay and Jay had just started dating at the time, and the song's lyrics and head over heels delivery reflected what she described as the first step of a relationship right before you let go. End quotes. That's the number 16 song. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what the number 17 song is? I don't remember the greatest it. Uh, song in the history of rock music, Bohemian Rhapsody. So see. that's why this list is complete fucking horse shit. Okay. <laughs> this is gonna... also why I put it on there because I knew like I I can look at these kind Daddy of Daddy Yankee and, and number get... 50 gasoline. That got me mad. I Le- hated that song legendary, so much. legendary rock song, Stairway to Heaven. The second greatest song in the history of rock music behind Bohemian Rhapsody is like in the 60s well i mean just this to say, makes me I, want to murder an entire litter of kittens i i will say and on that point because i just i scrolled to the top 50 lauren hill's doo-wop 
widely considered one of the greatest songs I like in in R and B. Just is only one spot higher than Gasolina. And I'm not my thing is whether that should be 49. It's just you're trying to tell me a song that I literally have filtered that Gasolina song out of my head and I can't even tell you what the beat is. If I hear one note of doo-wop by Lauren Hill, I got that song in the, my brain the rest of the day. I mean, that song, it just, it's, in, it, that's just so funny to me. Like, you're right. You're right. Like this list. Is- a, so, okay. The top 10. I love Hey Ya. I love Outcast. Yeah. It's not a top 10. It's not a top 10 song. Okay. It's Missy not their Elliott, best song. Missy Elliott, <laughs> Get Your Freak On at number eight is insulting to music. Correct. Okay. Outside <laughs> of those two, I don't really have any issues. Marvin Gaye is fine. Uh, the um, what's the Fleetwood Mac song? Dr- Dreams. No. It's not their best song. It's not it's their not best like- song. It's that's because of a guy and fucking Snapple. And uh, isn't it it's not uh, their best song? Cranberry juice or something? Whatever. Sure. I don't care. Cran apple. <laughs> Cranberry. Cran apple the the chain is better what's the other one fleetwood mac i mean I, there's a lot Whatever. of like fleet. yeah, yeah. The chain, yeah i mean at minimum the chain's better song marvin gay what's going on that's fine uh nirvana we've had this conversation about nirvana like smells like team spirit is probably not a top 10 or a top five song in terms of quality it is probably a top five song in terms of importance right so i will say i'll give that you know that's fine bob dylan like a rolling stone that's fine uh sam cook that's fine public enemy fight the power that's probably another one of those important like based on importance important type songs yeah. uh aretha franklin uh, that's fine i don't know about number one but i'm also biased towards rock music bohemian rhapsody at number 17 is an absolute travesty yeah and should... i would say that stairway in the 60s is a travesty those are both top 10 songs period like there's no I... and the fact that there was no what were strawberry fields six was, there, was it in the top 10 yeah okay it's in the yeah. top 10 beach boys that doesn't need to be 11 either i mean i could i could pick this apart i'm not going to um I'm glad I brought it up though, because I Strawberry like Fields that... is my favorite Beatles song, so I like that. Uh, Strawberry Fields forever. That's good. So it is uh, outside of those two, and like I said, I really like Outcast. I don't know that Hey Ya is a top ten that, song to me. That is just a song because it was just so freaking popular. Yeah, sure. Like you sure. know, more than the actual quality of the song and you know, whatever it is. <laughs> it just, I'll tell you what, man. Fucking Daddy Yankee at number 50 ahead of Stairway to Heaven. I want to cry. Whoever that is deserves to be karate chopped in the throat. I just, whoever made this that is, call. I'm just going to go the pure problem is Other people signed off on it too. Like, oh right. yeah, that it, sounds like a great idea. What? And this is, I'm going to go pure bias. The fact that you're going to tell me that the greatest songwriter right now Temporary songwriter right now does not have a higher ranking than that song. Taylor Swift does not have a high is absolute just garbage. She is widely considered the best songwriter of her like generation in that music. And you're saying Gasolina is a better song is I'm, I'm glad we did this because that just we have our fodder. It's that song sucks. It's not a top 500 song. It's not a top 1000 song. It is in the lowest 1% of all songs ever made. And somehow it's number 50. It's not good. I was so, when that song was popular, I remember because I like, this was my newspaper days where I only really listened to Taylor Swift and Miley Cyrus when I got, when I was driving on the way home, because I was always tired and I needed music to pump me up. And sometimes that song would come on and I'd be like, I'd rather just die. And I'd turn the radio off because I could not take that song. So I think that that statement raised more questions than it answered. Well, I mean, you know, you, you've been with me. Miley Cyrus kept us alive, Brenton. 
That's fair. <laughs> Number five. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, the VMA wrap up. Colin McGregor. Colin McGregor? Connor McGregor. Connor McGregor. Oops, it spell checked me. Sorry. I like Colin. You should change this. Uh, yeah. Connor McGregor threw a beverage at Machine Gun Kelly. And that was really the most <laughs> exciting part of this year's VMAs. Nearly everyone performed, but Ozuna's La Funka stood out as the weirdest with dancing bears. Highlights of the awards included Justin Bieber being named artist of the year olivia rodrigo won best new artist and song of the year for driver's license and most importantly i don't know about that <laughs> to me <laughs> I, don't know about, I don't know about that most importantly john mayer won best rock video for last train home foo fighters received the icon award so i only watched performances like i couldn't watch this live um yeah. you know it was this show has gotten so weird and pink and i don't mean the artist right. i just felt like every time i watched anything on this it was weird to my brain it was literally just had this pinkish filter over every performance and i don't know if i if i'm wrong uh but i watched like six or seven of these performances and every one of them had this going on so i don't know if there's something mind control with the pink colorways mm. i don't know i don't know if this, this was just um... the theme it was weird though and that La Funka, that just made me feel uncomfortable. Yeah, so I didn't, love you um, about it ranked number one as best performance. I was like, it freaked me out. So number one in some aspects. I didn't see that. I was alerted to the fact that Lil Nas X like pretended to be pregnant or something. That's his, that's been his shtick for okay. his new album. He's oh, just okay. been pregnant with his Montero album. Yeah. Okay. That's his thing. Uh, I saw the I saw the second half of the Foo Fighters. Um, they're the, good. Of the they're Foo still Fighters, rocking out. Uh, that was fun performance. And when I came down, they were doing a song I, I wasn't familiar with, but then they ended with Everlong as they should always. Yeah. And that was awesome. But they cut. They would like cut to people in the audience, and you could tell they're like, I don't know who this is. Who is this? <laughs> It was like the lead people, singer. <laughs> it was like other people who were there for awards, you know. The it's lead like, singer is like the lead singer has a, long hair, but he's old. Is he cool? Yeah. He seems like he'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. It it was it very was, it was very like who who is this? Who are these guys? I mean, they're only in the rock and roll hall of fame, you know. Yeah, they're only one of the greatest bands ever. I mean, they really are. And you know, they let's put it this way: they have someone that's in considered the great one of the greatest bands ever as their lead singer. Yeah, and he is, there you go. Dave Grohl is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice, yeah. which is more than most people can say. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, the VMA is. It's I think you put it best last week when you said it's crazy that MTV is still pretending they care about music. Right. I'd rather they just don't. I know that they have to do this now, but I wish they don't, like somehow made it different i don't know how they make this different um, it's you know i just i i don't know i mean it's just like a crap show and whatever it did inspire halloween though um I, janie and i are considering going as megan fox and machine gun kelly for halloween so I, that could uh, be machine a thing gun, machine gun kelly is terrifying he is okay <laughs> vma uh, wrap up vma wrap up machine gun kelly is terrifying <laughs> so uh, we will, we'll move on okay so we're going to start uh pop culture potpourri with uh our review or our review our reaction of the hawkeye trailer neither of us have seen it uh we've waited for this moment we've waited and waited for this moment um to check this trailer out so we're going to do a live trailer reaction just how we did for the matrix and spider-man so no okay uh i am at zero are you ready i am at zero let's do this three two one play rogers the musical count me in <laughs> i did see some see screens him. some screenshots yeah of that. Uh, you clearly won't be home for christmas clint it's christmas theme so that's I good. like i like that huh i like that molotov back yeah i like this is almost like bond like to me 
Yeah, it does feel in bond, some like, ways. Bond and like Die Hard, or and then there's that. Yeah, that dog only had one eye. Yeah, <laughs> that looks. I kind of. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> that was a good trailer. I think yeah. it because it certainly left me. Uh, so, well, first of all, what did you, what did you think? It was cute. Like it was. I hate to say, I was like, it was just. It was just fun. I, the, yeah. I don't know anything that's going to happen. It left us completely blank slate on what the actual theme right. of this is. Really, I mean, he's gone. He's going Jonathan Taylor Thomas trying to get home for Christmas, and right. that's basically it. And Haley Steinfeld is this archer, and Kate Bishop. That's cool. Kate Bishop, right? Kate Bishop, and that's really cool i just think this is gonna be like it looks like it's just gonna be a ton of fun uh i we don't know if that actually is the case but right. if that is the case where it's just like playing into the thing of hawkeye is a superhero even though he's just got a bow and arrow and the planets you know his line from that where you know like I, none of this makes any sense right. which i love yeah uh Ultron. if it plays into that i think that would be perfect for this i will be curious of a few things we got the end credit scene of Black Widow in which Yelena was kind of tipped off that Clint was who was responsible for Nat's death. Yeah. So I wonder if we see her show up, Florence Pugh, as Black Widow 2 in this kind of gunning Hopefully. for him. So there's that, that'll be a question that'll need to be answered. Obviously, this will have to connect to the greater thing at this point because that's how everything is. See, I feel like... Everything we've gotten thus far in phase four now is you had WandaVision, which was very contained when you kind of look at everything. Then you had Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which started to show the collection of uh, Val Contessa's sort of like off-brand you know, like generic Avengers with US agent. She later gets to Black Widow 2 in the end of Black Widow. And then we had the Loki thing, which obviously cracks open the multiverse. And then the whole Shang-Chi arc where it's kind of the ground and pound thing, but I feel like it's going to relate more to the multiverse yeah. type stuff. So I definitely think that this is going to fit into the Falcon and the Winter Soldier kind of mold of and black widow where it's the earth-based stuff and i wouldn't be surprised if we saw julia we dreyfus pop up in here to recruit kate bishop at some point to the uh great value avengers what do you think i definitely think it's gonna happen uh that's because that's what i, I think the next avengers movie is gonna be young <laughs> it's gonna be young yeah avengers. young avengers right yeah. uh, at least that's what yeah, it seems no, think, like anyway right I think that'd be cool. Um, I hope that uh, they actually have a full Rogers uh, thing that I can watch. I, if they do a separate thing on the bonus content, I will watch. I'll be all in. That sounds amazing. That would be a fun. I know Chris Evans is out on the movies. That'd be a fun little thing where he plays Steve Rogers on the in the play. That would be or like a background dancer or something. That would be hilarious. Just he's always not Captain America. He's none of these things. He's just there. That'd be fun. I, I know that's not going to happen, but I would, you know, that right. would be fun. And I think this show is kind of what they, the direction they need to go right now. We talked about with, you know, Loki going to all this stuff. This is to me, not going to be anything. There won't be any multiverse stuff. This is. Uh, you can't imagine this is going to be I right around how the they same do time as, as Eternals. Right. Uh, this Hawkeye debuts. November 24th. It's literally right in between the Eternals and Spider-Man. Yeah. So it's it feels like we're going to get multiverse out of our brains with Eternals. That's just how it's going to be. And it's obviously what's going on with Spider-Man. So mm -hmm. I think this is kind of them in a weird way. Like they're splitting the difference here in the middle where they're like, here's not that. This is this yeah. is for your this is like you said, you know, the ground. This is the winter soldier. This mm -hmm. is like you said, the James Bond thing. I think that's like yeah. a cool yeah, way to do it. That's that's that that's what it struck me. Yeah, as. it struck me as very Bond like. 
in the, and which makes sense because you know hawkeye is an agent of shield so he is a and he was referred to this as as such in the first avengers movie as a yeah. the super, you know a super spy basically yep so there's that i think this show is gonna be awesome i like really i i thought it was gonna be good anyhow i just think that the way you do hawkeye is the way they do hawkeye and kind of play into the fact that he is just a normal guy but other than being very accurate uh so you know he can get cut and he bleeds and all these things so no i i'm looking forward to this this got me like really pumped up for you know like i've said you you and i kind of agree we like the ground yeah <laughs> we like the ground yeah on marvel yeah. so i did i just fear my fear is that it falls into the same trappings as falcon and the winter soldier where it was almost like budget like this is like yeah this is like great value captain america which Maybe. it was with john walker like that right was part of that whole shtick but like the whole you know what i mean like the disney plus yeah. shows man i i don't know i haven't loved them i loved wandavision but the other ones have been i've been very lukewarm on yeah I that's why I feel like maybe that's why I feel better about this is because all the other ones are trying to maybe do too much. Maybe. Like, we're trying to be the new Captain America or, you know, Loki's tying us in the multiverse. This is just Hawkeye. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and I just feel like that's kind of, that's that's like where I'm at with this. This is just Dude Hawkeye. with a bone and arrow. Yep. And time to kill <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> right. Um, no time to die. Right. We'll see if the sky <laughs> falls. <laughs> your move uh from russia with love i hope not right well <laughs> we'll see he's so good you know why he's so accurate he's got a golden eye yes well we'll see tomorrow which will never die God. <laughs> um you let's, know, I, let's, I feel let's like I'm just rolling the dice as like Casino Royale for me right. right now. All right, stop being an octopusy <laughs> and let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, the iPhone 13 was announced because, of course, it's you skipped got one. You skipped one, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I had it scrolled down. My bad. But whatever. Damn anyhow, it. iPhone. Um, sorry. Hour. Christopher, yeah, it is my first time using this laptop uh christopher nolan ends partnership with warner brothers in his next film Did you do laptop? no that's why i was making a joke it's oh, my okay. first time using this laptop for the thousandth I got, time i got kind of excited there for a second no and anyway, his next film will be d- distributed by universal yeah we talked so, about the, the his next film being the uh i film about j robert oppenheimer the father of the atomic bond right. bomb bomb Mom. see what i did there the freudian yeah the atomic bomb yeah uh nolan this this split was coming because he publicly criticized warner's decision to move everything to day and date releases on hbo max despite the fact that they had to get things out but he shopped around and uh universal was the only studio or uh, publisher willing to meet his steep demands which here you go. It's a it's a smaller scale project with a hundred million dollar budget, which is pretty small for a Nolan movie. Yeah. He requested an equal marketing budget, as well as quote this comes from IGN quote total creative control twenty percent of first dollar gross and a blackout period from which the studio wherein the company would not release another movie three weeks before or three three weeks after his release additionally (laughs) additionally i love christopher nolan (laughs) to ensure his movie wouldn't land on a streaming service immediately nolan also requested at least a 100 day theatrical window for comparison marvelous shang chi has a 45 day theatrical window uh and universal was uh the hollywood reporter says the three main competitors for nolan's movie were apple sony and universal apple reportedly could not meet nolan's theatrical window request while sony was considered up until the very end nolan sided with universal after the company company plainly said just just said yes like ah you're christopher nolan do whatever the fuck you want 
Right. So this would be his second uh, period piece around the time of World War II, the first obviously being Dunkirk. So is he a cocky dickhead or is he a visionary or a little bit of both? I think it's, I think it's a little bit of both. Okay. I think that's what it is. I think any great artist has to be a little bit of both. And as we you know, know from our discussion with, with Dallas uh, yeah. about Donda, that art happens in a heated basement. Attic. Attic, sorry. Right. <laughs> with Hot a, attics. With a 100-day theatrical release window. Yes. <laughs> I love Christopher Nolan. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, Nolan November, <laughs> right around the corner. Yep. 10 Christopher Nolan movies uh, summarized and ranked for your pleasure courtesy of the bxg uh that's going to be coming here in about a month and a half but i mean you know he's kind of earned that cachet though you know what i mean i think so i think so i if i were a production company I'd be like, new, do whatever you want has he won an oscar no he's i would i would say because it was scorsese he's the greatest living director without an oscar Yes. This might do it for him. People love period pieces. They do. This sounds good too. Like ah, we'll sounds, see. You know. We'll see. I don't want to say anything yet. Okay. Cool. Well, I already said it, but I'll say it again. The iPhone 13 was announced because of course it has better camera. Who cares? Yeah. This I is... mean, I I'm an iPhone person, but whatever. I'm not. I'm whatever I don't understand the people who are like, I'm gonna buy the iPhone 13 the same as I bought an iPhone 12. I'm gonna spend thirteen hundred dollars on a phone every year. By the way, that PlayStation 5 that costs five hundred dollars is a terrible investment. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I get a new phone when my phone feels like it's gonna crap. That's when I get a new one. <laughs> I have nothing else um, to say on the matter. It's fine. Uh Longtime comedian, former SNL Weekend Update anchor, Norm MacDonald passed away after a long battle with cancer. Uh, we wish the family of Turd Ferguson the very best. Um, I love Norm MacDonald, and that was totally on me when I was ranking comedians that I forgot about him. Um, one of the most influential comedians, one of the people I've mimicked for a good portion of my life, and just sitting back yesterday, and one of those rare occurrences where you're like on Twitter, or you're on, and everyone was just like, norm's the best nobody talked bad about him it was a great moment of like oh we can all agree norm mcdonald was hilarious he held it together just the way he was able to hold these four minute jokes together incredible uh, look up the moth joke if you've uh if you're looking for a good norm mcdonald look up his oj stuff from his weekend update hilarious the guy is a lot of people said like one of one it truly He's one of my all-time, one of my all-time favorite comedians. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. I think that he was at his best as a stand-up, not necessarily as a movie actor uh, or, or as such, you know, an on-screen actor. He was one of the better Weekend Update guys for sure. Uh, his delivery, his comedic timing was was excellent. I, I just, you know, that's he's my favorite things. weekend update person as an yeah, SNL person. He's my I, I favorite. I think that he's probably mine. I would have to go back and look at all of them collectively to see if there's maybe somebody else. Him in, in the celebrity Jeopardy, as great as the Connery thing was, and as great as Will Ferrell, obviously, as, as Alex Trebek, that was one of the more memorable ones because outside yeah. of Connery and Trebek, you don't really remember any of the other people, but when he's Burt Reynolds and he's got a fucking cowboy hat on, he's like, nah, my name's Turt <laughs> Ferguson now. Ferguson. Like that was, yeah. you know, one of the still, still like very highly quoted, like oh, yeah. from that thing. So, you know, it's a real bummer. Uh, I guess he had, he battled cancer for nine years. So that's a really long time it's crazy for that sort of thing. I didn't see what uh, the specific type was. But it is a, you know, it is a shame for sure. Um, Shang-Chi had another strong weekend at the box office, holding off Malignant to take the top spot. The first entry into Marvel's Kung Fu Hero story has earned more than $250 million globally, despite the Delta COVID variant continuing to spread. 
It is currently number two to Black Widow, and I believe that if the Delta thing were not a thing, that it would definitely be number. It would have passed it up. I think. I think you'd be looking at three, four, five hundred million at this point. Oh sure. Yeah. Uh, so good, um, good on them. You know what I mean? I, I yeah. think it's exciting for that the actors and the team and everything a, like that. It's a good sign, you know, that movies like this that nobody knows anything about uh, were able to produce. Yeah. Anything. Well, I, so, despite the despite the COVID thing, I think it's a good sign that people still want to go to the movies. Right. You know what I mean? Because I think that a lot there was a lot of skepticism coming out of the pandemic where everybody was quarantined for, you know, months on end and we were getting all this stuff on demand and we're getting it all day and date on Disney Plus, HBO Max, whatever that people wouldn't want to go back to the theaters. Yeah. And I think that some of the strong performances, Shang-Chi, Black Widow, Fast 9, uh jungle cruise i had to throw that one in there just for you but those were sure. movies that are have proven that people still want to go to the movies to see movies right yeah i'm you know i love seeing movies and i love seeing them in the theater so hopefully we can all continue to do that um get double vax if you need to get your get your booster um <clears throat> Some of the art, music, and effects Emmys have been doled out with One Division winning Marvel its first Emmy and the Mandalorian taking home seven Emmys. The primetime Emmys are set for this Sunday. Excellent. But we, the want, queen, the, we want the big ones. The, yeah, it's, yeah. We, you know. Here's what I want. Mandalorian. I know, you're, I know you like the queen. And that's fine. But I'd like the, it, not the queen, the crown. The, I, the crown. The crown. I always the call it the queen, but the crown. But I'd yeah. like to, I'd like Princess Diana to take a blaster shot to the face from the from the blaster of the Mandalorian. I don't even think hey, they're in the same category. I don't think so. I don't. I didn't I'm even not, look at the Emmys. I like the sure. Emmys. Well, we talked about them at so, one point. Yeah. yeah. A while ago. We did. I'm just. I'll. I'll watch afterwards because I won't be able to watch it live anyhow. And I'll still get right. mad. Here's the thing. I'll say this right now, where I'm like, eh, I'm not really, you know. And then Sunday I'll come home and I'll rewatch it or I, I'll catch up on everything and I'll get mad because that's what I do. I get mad over things that literally don't matter. So, People say like, oh, mainstream award movies suck. It's like, listen, the Emmys are a big deal. The people, okay. People say mainstream award movies suck because they like things that are niche and those things don't get nominated for mainstream awards. Yeah. That's a big reason why people say that sort of thing. But, okay, the outstanding drama series, The Boys, Bridgerton, The Crown, The Mandalorian, Lovecraft Country, Pose, The Handmaid's Tale, This Is Us. The Boys and the Mandalorian are not shows that would typically be nominated in this category. And as fans of those shows, I would be delighted if either of them win. They won't, they won't win. The Mandalorian will be nominated every year. It'll never win. You know what I mean? But it'd be great if it did. You know Isn't I mean? it? I, I, and I hate, and I'm like the last person in the world that would ever say something like this. Cause I am not a moral victory person, but the fact that this show is nominated for an award with something that's called the crown based off of English patriarch, you know, that kudos to Disney. I mean, like, honestly, this is what I'm at. Like you were able to take it. But here goes the thing, right. Is, is that I don't think that there's, I'm looking, I'm scrolling down through for the limited, limited series, uh, Mare of Easton, I may destroy you, WandaVision, The Queen's Gambit, The Underground Railroad. I know that that you were a big fan of Anna Taylor Joy and The Queen's Gambit. Yeah. Tell me, tell me Elizabeth Olsen doesn't deserve to win. Well, like, I, already, I, mean, I said that she should win. But when we went back on the show, she did more than anyone's done in a TV show in quite some time. I, I, <laughs> I certainly, you know, yeah. outstanding outstanding supporting actress uh Catherine Hahn you know what I mean yeah I, I just I don't know man uh, outstanding supporting actor in a limited Don Cheadle for the 29 seconds he was on screen and <laughs> right that's so, so stupid that's so ridiculous they should have I legitimately where's that one at it's so strange to me outstanding host in a in a reality series not tj lavin that's bullshit 
and I will maintain that. I just want to find. I like to think one... that maybe TJ Lavin was just like, I don't that you don't nominate me. I don't that's accept. just yeah, I don't accept your your petty outstanding awards. guest actor. Here's my issue. Okay, first of all, outstanding guest actor in a drama series. Uh, Courtney B. Vance, Lovecraft Country, Charles Dance, The Crown. We do love Charles Dance. I bet you we do. Have, he didn't have a turtleneck on, though. Don Cheadle, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Timothy Oliphant, The Mandalorian, Carl Weathers, Mandalorian. Timothy Oliphant should win. But do you yeah, know who should. should really win that category? Because he's not actually nominated. It's Mark Hamill. Who? Well, yeah. Mark Hamill yeah. should win. He yeah. should win. Outstanding guest actor in a drama series. He just showed up. Yeah. Kicked ass. Took names. Yep, exactly. He's gone. But it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I guess in a sense it is like a moral, a moral whatever. But I also, like you said, I don't really believe in that. I don't, I don't think that any of those shows, like they're better at like, like, ooh, I'm an actor or whatever. But you know what? Who the fuck cares about that? I have like, I, 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 this is the thing. Most of the time I'm like 100% on this i i'm not saying the crown's better because it isn't it there it's just i really like the crown i also really like the mandalorian I'm i think not, that my know, i think my aggression things. is talking you out of the crown i think that's what it is i think that <laughs> no I'm i also really love the crown i love the crown my thing is what that show was able to do is take a thing i normally don't care about at all and made me interested in it sure, now but this we is tried what watching. the mandalorian did it took something that's been a lot oh, sure. no, no. for the last I, three decades yes. and made it awesome again right i it's, yeah i this is my thing. I want the Mandalorian to win this award because it'd be awesome. It's not going to happen. Right. It would be awesome. It's not going to happen. Let's just move uh, on. I'm sad. Well, sorry. Well, uh, Brittany's engaged yeah, and whatever. she deleted her Instagram account though. So that was a bummer. That was a bummer. Yeah. You know, she, that, it's weird that she did that. Um, I'm sure. I see. <laughs> she deleted her Instagram account because she's going to start an early fans. Well, he came I mean, like that's what it was they didn't do anything. To. No, they, yeah. they they reversed that. Oh, okay. That'd be funny if she did. She won't. It'd be really but funny. She won't, but it'd be funny. It would be funny. Um, that's yeah. All right, Brittany. I mean, good, I mean, good just for keep, her. She got just you know, keep doing you, Brittany. I'll tell you yeah. what, if I was dating Britney Spears, I'd I'd probably try and lock that down too. I'm sure. just saying. Yeah, you should. Right. Um gotta lock it down. Yeah. <laughs> if you like the thing, you should have put a ring on it. That's, that's I'm surprised right. that was in the top 10 songs. That song is really good, though. No, it's it, not. It's not a top 10 song. Shut up. I'm, I'm not saying that's a top 10 song. I'm saying that song is just very good. The fact it's, that, is that it? crazy, crazy in love is higher than that is actually kind of weird. Um, but we'll move on. I'll, I'll tell you know, what's crazy. Game. I'll tell you what's what's ridiculous is that it's higher than Bohemian Rhapsody. Continue. There, that's true. Play Two little the games were released this past week on PS5 is Death Loop, which is receiving nines and tens from major media outlets. Also, NBA 2K22 hit shelves. Now I'm kind of bummed that like I didn't I didn't budget my time for Death Loop, and it's apparently great. So I'll try to pick it up at some point, but it's uh, apparently it's amazing. So that's a bummer. And then 2K is whatever. It's 2K. You just Luka, get it. We could dodge before it. you go to bed. I'm probably not going to get it this year. Oh, okay. No. I, I might get it. I haven't got one for a few years, so I might get it. Started. I just quit playing last year's like a month ago. <laughs> so I've been playing it. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Mackie tabbed starting a twisted metal TV series based on the PlayStation Car Arena Combat series of the same name. Let Whoa. me tell you something. <laughs> I'm very excited for HBO's series of The Last of Us, one of my favorite games of all time. Yes. I think it's going to be great. I think when it comes out, it's going to be a contender and a winner of Emmy Awards. I'm, I'm, I stake my name on that. Do you know what won't? This? Twisted Metal. <laughs> this sounds bad. It's not a great idea. No. I can't wait to see who they get to play Sweet Tooth, the demented clown that drives a ice cream oh God. truck. Yeah, that's right. Oh, oh God. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some of those characters are really gnarly. Yeah. Sweet It'll Tooth is definitely on Megan's Law. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, something else that may be on Megan's Law. Let Letterman's David beard. David Letterman's beard needs to calm the fuck down. <laughs> I just saw a picture of him. That's not really yeah. news. 
No, because obviously it's been happening for a while. That sort of thing doesn't happen overnight. But holy no. crap, it's intense, man. He looks like he should be wearing a brown robe and singing hymns. Maybe he is. Uh, I allow it because he is the greatest late night show uh, host uh, ever for me. Uh, Johnny, so I allow it. But it's yeah, that's it's so gnarly. It's so weird. Cause he was always so clean shaven when he had his show, nothing. And then he's just like going full beard. Love it. He's like almost unrecognizable. And, yeah. uh, you know, media recommendations, uh, shave, watch the shave. shave. I've shave, been shaving Dave. very consistently. Uh, shave day. I'm not telling shave you to shave. shave, telling him to shave. <laughs> okay. Um, so we watched a really good documentary on Netflix about, uh, drummers. It's called count me in. I love it. Uh, I have got to this point where if someone is making you, if you made a good enough documentary on paint drying, I probably would like it. I am at that point in my life where I don't know if documentaries are better or pe better people are doing them. And not that I'm saying that drummers aren't interesting. It was just, this was awesome. Was uh, it about the guy from Def Leppard, the one armed drummer? They did not have him. They'll have other drummers in it. You'll uh, you'll appreciate. It's great. Uh, plus, once once you kind of get to the last twenty five minutes where they're just playing drums, it's so cool. Uh, Fast and Furious Fall. I've gone through uh, you know the first three of those, just counting through. It's, it makes me want to drive really fast, which I like mm -hmm. to drive fast anyhow. Does it make and you so, want to steal DVD players? Uh, no, it does not make me want to do that. It makes me want to like race people though i mm. am in my volvo so that would be a losing battle uh slow get up gets going once it gets going uh casey musgrave's new album came out and just jamming that star cross it's good if you like stacy stacy if you like K casey musgrave's uh you're gonna like this it's a divorce album so it's sad uh you'll listen to the lyrics and get sad but she's good and then just i'm seeing heim on friday so i'm stoked about that today i guess i'm seeing them tonight and i'm stoked as about this that. as this publishes as this yeah. just yeah, yeah exactly what about you brendan um let's see i am uh reading the avengers the initiative uh cool. it is the run it's 35 issues 35 36 issues immediately after civil war it takes place immediately after Civil War and it leads into Secret Invasion. Yeah. So I'm checking that out. Uh, I've got the first uh, hardback. I access, so I, I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. Whenever I go somewhere, like on a trip, one of the things that I always do is I go to a local comic book shop and I buy a graphic novel. That's just one of those things. I support local comic book shops. So I picked up this, this Avengers book and I was like, ah, whatever, this looks cool. Well, then I realized it was number two in a series. So then I had to order number one I'm off Amazon. Down. Yeah. So I ordered uh, I ordered the first one. He came in. I started reading it. It also ties into World War Hulk. And so now I feel like, oh, God, now I have to get World War Hulk. So <laughs> I'm probably, uh, my graphic novel collection is probably going to expand pretty rapidly over the course of the next couple months. Is just I try to accrue all the stuff that was like right around this uh, run just so that I have, because I'm like that. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. I can't. I have to have all the shit that ties in. It's one of the annoying parts about being me. I beat Far Cry 5 and I beat Chasm. And so now I'm just doing trophy clean cleanup and I'm and I got uh, Ken and Bridge of Spirits, but that doesn't uh, come out until Tuesday as this publishes. So it's preloaded or will be preloaded on my PS5, but not available until Tuesday. Bum, bum, ba -da. Are you going to make a... Uh claymation version of seer or just to make it happen It'd be cool no, no i'm not oh. gonna do that bummer because that would be cool it is oh, a claymation. what are you talking about claymation i don't do no just because we want to have that we we want to have Secret i would wars rather have seer wars instead of multiverse but yeah so I'm maybe just we just have to make it happen i know there are dozens of us there are <laughs> PSG podcast publishes every Friday on 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 a.m. Pacific Time, 4 a.m. Hawaiian. Aloha. On podcast services around the globe. 
Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Good Pod app, Podbean, Stitcher, all that stuff. It's on everywhere. Facebook.com slash BXG Podcast for the Facebook group, Instagram at BXG Podcast at GT Fills at Y2B, Twitter at BXG Podcast at GT Fills and at Y2B. YouTube, where the videos go up of the reviews, the a la carte, it's a la carte, it's a la modi. So there's a little bit of, there's stuff. It's not everything. It's a sample. It's a nice sample size for you. It's the challenge. It's what if it's movie reviews. I'll probably put up us talking about the Rolling Stone thing because it was funny to me. How yes. angry, how angry yeah, I got. Angry I got so angry. I got angry. And so we'll do that and we'll, you know, pay attention to the Instagram because we solicit uh, for responses to like, you know, what did you think of this movie or blah, 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 blah. You know, and we're trying to, this is more than just, this is more than just you and I getting together talking. We're trying to build a community of people who like the things that we talk about. You know, we want people to talk about Marvel. We want people to talk about Star Wars. We want people to talk about the challenge. We want to get people in on the challenge. We want to get people into comics. We want to get people into games. We want to get people into music. We want to have this community to have these conversations. So please recommend share subscribe we are giving we we are so invested in building this community that we are literally giving things away for free yes 100 subscribers on the youtube channel we will give away a 25 i'm just going to put it you know what we're just going to do it like this i'm going to say it right now 100 subscribers we're going to give a 25 dollar gift card away 250 subscribers we're going to give another 200 or $25 gift card away. 500 subscribers, we're going to give away a $50 gift, gift card. 1,000 subscribers, we'll give a $100 gift card away. And we get 50,000 subscribers, we will give away a PlayStation 5. There you go. Boom. I said it. it. He said it right there. Tell, tell your, your friends. Tell your friends. Tell your families. <laughs> tell your mothers. About the unmistakable essence of the BXG podcast. Take care. Thanks friends. for listening. I love it.